Well, hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're here. Glad you're stopping by. Um, this is a video I really don't have any pleasure of making, but uh, I've been pretty open with my life for the most part um, ever since I made the channel. Um, there's some things I've probably overshared, um, but I want to go over a few things. Um, first, and I promise you I'm not going to preach at you on this here, so don't worry about it. This is something um, I need to get out. So, as you guys know, uh, last year I lost a person that I consider my actual father uh, to cancer. He, he passed away, I believe it was in October. Um, really hard, really tough. Um, the one thing I got to do for him uh, before he died was last Christmas uh, I bought him a pocket knife and said, I love you, Dad. And it was the first time I've ever called him Dad. And... I wanted that to be the chance I got to do that. And later on, while he was in bed, um, pretty much bedridden, uh, I went and seen him. And, you know, we talked for a little bit. And I was, as I was leaving, he said, uh, I love you like you're my own. And you know, we embraced, and it was a hug. And um, it was one of those confirmations that I really needed in my life at the time. Um and then, you know, he said that, you know, we'll, we're going to beat this and we'll laugh about it one day. Um, if you think about it, uh, somebody with terminal cancer that's dying, there's no fixing it. Um, dying is, and I know this is going to sound harsh, is kind of beating it. Um, and I say that by meaning they're no longer suffering anymore. They get to go in peace. Uh, no more pain. Um, and But it's sad. It's sad, it's sad to think about it. You're like, man, that's, that's a weird way of looking at it. Um, but I'm happy that he's no longer in pain. Now, let's kind of rewind back in history. Um, I My real father, my biological father... Um, I've told you guys he was very abusive. He loved the bottle more than he loved anything else. He was a compulsive liar, a narcissist on the highest level. And he always used people to get his way. And he always blamed people, uh, other people, when the problem lied right there in his hands. Um, most, most of the time, it was his temper and the bottle. You know, I've seen times where we got beaten from him. Uh, and I know, like, back in the day, like, getting beaten by your your dad and your mom with the paddle, not that kind of beating. Like, it was, it sucked. Um, you know, he'd take our stuff, like, we'd, we'd have toys and stuff like that, and he'd take them and pawn them or sell them at a flea market that he ran. And we'd come home, wanting to play Nintendo, and it was gone. And, uh, it got so bad to the point where he actually, uh opened a gun, pointed at my mom during an argument, and threatened to kill her. And, you know, she got beaten and all that stuff. It was, it was pretty bad. Pretty bad stuff, right? And, you know, as a kid, you, you see that stuff. And, and I, I still, and I, I still today, like, I, I hate to argue. And I hate domestic violence. I hate it because I've seen it. Like, when somebody says they're going to beat their wife or something like that, and I know we joke about it, on the whenever we're talking about the frauditors because a lot of the frauditors you know a lot of them have criminal backgrounds that included um domestic violence and you know we make fun of that because it's true most of them do and i hate that like i hate that more than anything like there's there's quite a few things like i you can say to me that won't bother me but the things that bother me the most is like suicide domestic violence and you know wishing cancer on children, uh, attacking, you know, other family members. But it it just, it just hurts me right away. Like, if somebody messes with my wife, I, I, I go, I like, I just want to beat their fucking head in. Um, we'll get there anyways. Um, you know, my mom and my dad, they got a divorce. And um, it was rough. Uh, divorces are terrible, especially when kids are involved. Um you know, my dad would try to say how bad my mom is, and 
uh, we should go live with him. And he got in this, like, we ended up ultimately staying with her mom and my stepdad at the time, which, you know, the, the, the crazy thing is, the crazy thing is, my whole life, and this is going to sound so childish, uh, my whole life I wanted a father. I wanted a dad. I wanted a father that would be there for me. And my stepdad came in, and I disrespected him for a long time. Um, and I took everything he said for granted, even though he was trying to help me. Um, he was he was tough. He was a tough guy. Um, he was a tough guy. Me and him was hard headed. Uh, I was the nerdy band guy that procrastinated, and he was a workaholic, and you know we butted heads a lot. And it wasn't until maybe a few years ago um, when we started doing a whole lot better. Maybe about maybe nine, ten years ago. Um, but now that he's gone, like I just I'm just like man, I lost my actual dad, the person that wanted to be my father, the person that said he loves me as his own. Uh, my real dad, many, many times, many, many times this has happened. Um, he, he would get kicked out of his significant other's places because, you know, the bottle or the abuse, he'd get kicked out and he'd want me, my brother, or somebody in the family to step in and he's going to live with us and all this stuff. And, you know, there'll be times where we like let him stay all night or something like that. We'd help him, give him money. Uh, last big case, you know, we got really tired of it uh, to a point. It was a couple years ago. Uh, he got kicked out again because, again, the bottle, the temper, and he was in a relationship with somebody that was exactly the same way as he is. Uh, probably almost worse. And those two, it's like watching Hurricane Katrina. Um, and, you know, that's about what it was. Uh, it was a relationship built on hate, lies, abuse, and all that bullshit that goes with it. Both of them narcissists. He got kicked out for, I don't know how many times at that place. Um, several, several times. And we've always came to, to his side to help him out because... You know, that's what family does. And, you know, some of the family on his side would message us and be like, you're supposed to take care of your dad. That's your father. And just make us feel like shitty fucking people. Shitty people. So one time, though, two, it was a couple years ago, um, he got kicked out and he wanted to move in with my brother. And at the time, I was living with my brother. Um, and we'll talk about that here in a second, too. So we'll, we'll, it's kind of a basically a rundown of what a narcissist truly is. Uh, and we'll talk about it. Um, he wanted to move into my brother's house, and we stopped him. So I got it's not going to fucking happen. Uh, no. The police came. He was in a cruiser. And they basically wanted to know where we should take him. And we just told him, you know, take him to jail or to the mission. Well, I think he went into detox at the jail for a few hours, and they let him go. And... We ended up taking him to the city mission. The city mission has this thing where if you stay there for so long, depending on, um, I guess, some other circumstances. Well, he was disabled. Um, he was disabled or... I think it's a fucking lie because he's stupid. Um, but he was disabled and... Um, he would be on a short list to get a low-income apartment. So he begged us to not make him stay there. And so we know you're going to stay, but we got him food. Uh, we got him drinks. Um, and we said, you got to stay the whole five days. It was either five or seven. And I could be wrong on the numbers. Um, and we just kept him on it. So you just need to do it. Just fucking do it. And... Everything went through. Um, the Workforce Development Center in our area was able to um, get him a low-income apartment. So uh, we helped him out. We got him moved in there. My brother got him a bunch of stuff to um, uh, slip like a bed and couch and all this stuff. And me and my wife brought some things. And uh, we gave him money and all kinds of help. Well, 
it, he said, he goes, I'm never going to do this again. This is my place. I'm so proud of my place. And anyways, a few months down the road, he brings in the girl that was the, 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 her, the, the toxic, toxicity train came back to town. And both of them ran havoc. And what happened, and I'm assuming, he said, his, and we warned him, we warned him on it. So it's like, if you move somebody else in there, they're going to raise your rent substantially. So I think he was only paying like maybe 300 bucks. And um, he moved her in, moved her in. Uh, the drinking still continued, all that stuff. People probably got pissed off because of all the yelling. And he decided to move to another place, which he told me and my brother that and probably other people in the family that the new place he's getting is bigger it's in his name and uh it's all his and um nothing can happen with me i was like okay that's good 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 fine that's great and i say is she moving in with you he's like well she's staying with me i was like she's fucking moving in with you that's that's what's going on so you know a few months like he helps my brother out like doing the babysitting and all that stuff and um, I haven't talked to him. I haven't talked to him really in a few months. And today he t messages me why I'm at work. Uh, cause you know, I think it was last week or week before I got a phone call from, uh, his number and his so-called girlfriend called cussing me out, like leaving a voicemail, just cuss me out and basically talking shit about my family. And I was like, okay, block phone number. And I, he texted me from another number and I was, he asked, I said, who was that, by the way? And he's he said, oh, it was her. It wasn't her. I was like, she messaged you. She called me on that phone. She said, well, that phone's in Huntington. I was like, no, you're texting me on that phone right now. You have that phone in, the, in my hand. The same phone number that she called me on, you are texting me on. You did not lose your phone in Huntington. You have it in your hands. Uh, I think I fucking messed that one up. But it was some, something like that. She, ultimately... She, he texted me from the phone that she cussed me out from, for no reason. I haven't talked to him in months. And anyways, this is about the time my brother was having a new child. I'm sorry, this is going to be a long video, so hang in there. Um, you know, <laughs> it's stupid because, like, like I said, today I get a text message, different number. And, you know, I've been getting a random phone calls from this number for a while. And I don't answer phone numbers I don't know unless I get an email or something uh, from a person saying they're going to call me or if it's a doctor's office or work or something like that. And it texted me and basically, <laughs> it, this is a mess. Like, I I, said, I asked him, I was like, hey, um, who's who, who is this? And he's like, this is your dad. I was like, oh, okay. And he said, can you call me? And he called me while I was at work. So I had to cancel the call. I said, hey, I'm at work. He said, well, don't worry about your daddy. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'll be all right. It's like, do you want me to call you? He's like, yeah, call me. I was like, is your woman there? So like, no, she's not there. I was like, well, I'm not going to call you as long as you're with her. I'm not going to do it. It's like, it's not going to happen. He tried to feed me his diatribe and how he's... You know, don't worry about him. It's just basic narcissist bullshit. And something snapped in my head. Like, I, I've been under a lot of stress. I'm just now getting my medications back in my system. Um, and, you know, I haven't taken all the meds because I don't have all the meds. Um, but some of the med medicines in my system, I've already been stressed out. So I messaged him I say, and I told him, I was like, I don't know what I say. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> he said, don't worry about me. I said, what are you talking about? Did she kick you out? I was like, don't lie to me. Then he said, yes, to do it legal. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that means. Um, I don't know what that means. I'm assuming that he's saying that she got kick kicked him out illegally. That's what I'm guessing. And <clears throat> basically what I said after that, I said, you told me, I, I, I said, you told me that that apartment was in your name. I said, my brother and I came to help you get a place, uh, and you took her back after he warned you, and you never listened. I said, I can't help you this time. And then he said, no, she didn't come, so he lied to me again, because she's been living there. 
I said, I've got my own issues to work out. You said you got that place in your name. You had your own place. Uh, we worked to help you uh, getting the things you needed. Um, we cared for you and you did the same mistake and we tried and I'm not going to do it anymore. And I blocked that number and I am no longer going to have this person in my life. Um, one thing I did say to a lot of people and I shouldn't have said because it's pretty dark and I was in a messed up place. So I said, I'll just see him at his funeral. Um, I don't, I don't want that. I was I said that out of madness. I was, I was angry and it was, it's a stupid fucking thing to say. Uh, he's still my, he's my dad, but you gotta think, you know, I got a brother, I got a sister, I got a half brother from his, from him has nothing he wants to do with any of them unless he's getting something out of it. Uh, he hasn't got to talk to um, his other son, which I have not had to ha had a relationship with because basically my dad made it seem like they w didn't want anything to do with me and I was afraid to intrude on their lives because I didn't want my dad to get in their lives. I didn't want that. I, I Like for the longest time, um, I was scared to get attached only for... You know, my dad to come in and ruin it for everyone. I, I don't want him to ruin another person's life. I, I don't want that. I don't want that. And you probably, you guys probably have parents or siblings or friends that are just like that. Um, they're very op uh, <laughs> they're opportunists. They're narcissists. They're drunks. Um, they will use you and abuse you and go back and do the same things after you after they tell you, "Hey, I'm never going to do this again." So I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with toxic people, was toxic family members, anyways. It did make me mad. I don't know why I'm mad. Um, I did not message my half brother. It's the first time I messaged him in years. Um, you know, I follow him on Facebook, and he's doing really good in his life. And I do not want my dad to interfere with that. So if he never talks to me ever that I understand um, I'm proud of him I really am uh, really proud of him and I wish I would have had a relationship with him for the longest time but you know I think that ships already sailed and I I mean I I would love that um, uh, he he's got he's got um, a really handsome man uh, with him uh, which is which is cool. He's he's in a happy relationship. Um, two of the most handsome men I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but no, they're they're good people, and I yeah I, I want them to be successful and not have to deal with these people, um, especially the way my dad is. Like he's like a super uh, hardcore. Nazi saluting racist piece of shit, which that kind of makes me segue into the next thing I wanted to talk about. So I've been cursing a lot in this video, and it's going to be weird for me to jump into this part. So as you guys know, a little while back I got saved. I uh, I asked God for forgiveness, and I accepted Jesus into my heart, uh, and I thought that was good. I felt really good about it. Um, you know, I have had times where it's been frustrating, just like anybody it can tell you if you're a Christian. Um, every day is not great. Every day is not great. And I know that's already going to be a, a slight against me. You're like, oh, you're a white male, but it's also a Christian. You are literally Hitler. Um, I, I don't care. Um, I was watching this video today, and it's basically about how to treat people the right way. As you guys know, I'm not very PC. I say some things that I shouldn't say. Uh, sometimes jokes I say, um, even though I don't mean them towards any other group, I am a one person, um, it does hurt other people. It does. Uh, the more I think about it, the more it, because you know, I have friends that are a part of the LGBTQ community, right? I have a lot. And, you know, I got docs uh, a while back for making fun of Jilly and saying, you know, he is, I said he's gay. But, um, at that point, I'm not, 
I'm not gonna I'm gonna be erased from that term uh, from my vocabulary. Um, the reason why I say that, because like I said, I got friends and I got family members that are part of that community, and you know, I never really thought like you know, me and my friends used to joke about saying stuff like that, but you like I gotta realize that like you know, times changed. Uh, it is hurtful, hurtful to say it, and that doesn't mean I'm going to be you know not funny and watch everything i am not i'm just not going to say those kind of things um and i'm not going to preach towards them um i you know i love these people uh, i do have i love, love my friends that are a part of that community um you know i have nothing against it and you know my my brother i would love to have a you know relationship with him um but I'm not going to be using that kind of language in my vocabulary anymore. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to be talking about um, any of that stuff, especially to my friends. I don't think I'm just going to. I think it's just, at this point, it's better just to not talk about that kind of stuff. Uh, leave 2005 to 2005 where it belongs. It's like I, I got to realize I'm not in the Call of Duty lobby anymore. Um, I got to realize that. I just got to. And I know some people are going to be like, you're lame you're bending the knee you're going woke it's like no I, I'm, I'm really not i'm just going to be me I'm just going to be me i'm going to do what i do i'm not going to get involved with anything else uh the whole point of this channel is mental health having fun sticking up the bullies calling them out uh but we have to kind of watch what we say i gotta watch what i say i have to um and i know hopefully hopefully you guys won't get mad at me for saying this stuff um and it's kind of spur like i said you know it all spilled off from this one text message from my, my actual father. Like, I was like, man, I don't want to be like this motherfucker. Um, I got a lot of praying to do <laughs> after this one, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I'm doing all kinds of sinning right now. I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect Christian. I'm new at this. Um, I don't want to be like my dad. And I will work my hands to the bone to never be like him. I might say some offensive things from time to time. And so you'll be like, whoa, don't say that. Um, but I'm going to do better, do a better job at doing this. Um, doesn't mean we can't have fun. I mean, we've still, we got, we've still got the other stuff. And I have a lot of plans with the um, uh Rodney Freedom stuff, but I just wanted to see what you guys saw. Have you guys deal with narcissistic family family members? Have you had somebody in your life that's been so terrible? And I, it's almost over, I promise. Um, you know, I, I look back at like when I was on hard times, when I was going through hell a lot in my life. Like, I don't want to say that it was other people's fault because a long time for a long time it was like it was their fault they caused this that was some terrible things i had friends that helped me out that stepped in and i'm forever thankful to them um you know for a long time i hid behind a curtain i didn't talk to anybody uh, especially after josh died uh that really destroyed me i just stopped talking to people because i thought i was on the same path i didn't want people to get attached to me and, you know, a lot of people that helped me out, they never heard from me again for a while. Because I was too busy hiding. I was in a deep sack of depression. Um, and still am. But I have a lot going for me now. I have, you know, I have a wife. I have a, um, I have a, uh, a nephew and two nieces. I have a family. Like, I have a channel where people actually like me. No, it's not a big channel, but I, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Um, you guys give me support and no, you know, that's great. For many, many years, I, I made a, uh, videos with zero to zero views. Nobody watched them, but I have people now that it hops on it. It's like, they actually like what I have to say. Um, but I do want to, I do want to help people. I don't want to be like him. Um, so if you're one of those people in my life that, uh, has helped me, that's helped pick me up when I needed it. Just let, I just want to let you know I love you. Um, I love you, and if something ever happens, 
um, I'll do my best to help you out the best I possibly can with what I have. Um, you know, the last few weeks, well, the last couple months has been pretty rough on my end. Um, but I think things are getting better. Uh, I have a job now. Uh, I actually had an interview for another job that pays really good and has really good benefits. Um, my current job does not have benefits and doesn't pay too good. Um, it pays well enough, but it's just the benefits really, really helps. And I, I'm at least guaranteed to have a job um, in six months. Because right now it seems like I'm on a contract and I don't really want that. But um, things are lining up. I had a second interview today, and I think it went pretty well. And a good thing is in my area. Like, it's it's actually right here in town. So I don't have to go really far. I think there is some traveling, though. I might have to go, like, Cincinnati or Columbus every once in a while. Um, but if you guys have people in your life that's toxic, the best thing I would say, is when you get to the point where you can't take it anymore, drop them. Drop them. Let them figure it out themselves. You can only help somebody else, somebody else, so many times. Uh, and if they keep on making the same mistakes, and yes, I am guilty of that. I've made the same mistakes. And looking at my life, like I swear to my a whole entire existence, but I'll never ever ever be like that i'll never be like that i would never do it i'm not going to blame other people for my problems i'm not going to ultimately i made the decisions that caused me to have my problems uh sure they may have been some help but ultimately it was free will if you're a christian uh you know that god gave you free will but anyways uh i love you guys very much i'm sorry for uh, the religious insert, sorry for uh, talking about my dad problems, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I'm just tired, you guys, I'm just tired, like I don't, I don't want to deal with him anymore, I, I give up, I really do, um, until he can prove that he is able to fix his life, um, maybe, maybe, um, but yeah, alright guys, I love you very much, I'll see you soon.